Hi there and welcome to another video in the folklore mythology series. Today we're talking about the whites or the vetter in Scandinavian mythology and folklore. And I will be reading because there's too much to memorize. Remember to check out the videos at the end and in the cards above to see more of this. In Scandinavian folklore you will find many kinds of whites. There are whites related to farm, land, sea, as well as forests. And they all have their own way of dealing with people. Most describe the whites as small creatures that look like ordinary people and live in underground societies. Sometimes they're described similar to ordinary people in both length or height and appearance, both beautiful and ugly, just like we are, or they didn't distinguish themselves at all from us, much as some trolls. Some sources say that they could change their size from very small to the same size as ordinary people. Their clothing seemed to have varied as much as ours do. Sometimes they were dressed in red, sometimes white, sometimes gray or neutral, but often happy, colorful clothes or a colorful hat. Some of the modern sources say they only dressed in grey. But I think it's more likely that the colours vary. Hair colour and hairstyle could also be varied, but the underground women, at least in the north, had very long hair. There are also stories that the whites are able to shapeshift or become invisible. It's usually said that they're transformed into, into a toad or a frog or maybe a striped worm or an ant. So people need to pay attention and not harm these creatures. The Scandinavian word for white, vette, comes from the Old Norse vette, which basically means supernatural creature. And it's related to the English white and the German wicht. Some believe that the whites get their English name from their appearance. In some stories they are described as pale and white is a homonym for the word white. Though it's also known that the word white is derived from the Old English wit, meaning thing or creature, and relates to the Dutch or German wicht, meaning little child. This most likely refers to the fact that whites are sometimes described as either incredibly thin and or short in stature. They can be dangerous if you treat them badly. Whites usually live in harmony with us humans, but they can use their magical powers if people have done something they don't like, damaged their house, or in any other way treated them badly. They would get back at you. And there are many stories about this. Like the trolls they had, especially in stories in Norland, cattle that they led out to pasture in the forests or among the mountains. In some records there are expressions such as the bears are the pigs of the whites or the elk is their big ox. Animals which for some reason deviated from the norm, such as cows that were bright white or gave a lot of milk, could be associated with the supernatural. Even animals that turned up unexpectedly, seeming out of nowhere, were considered to belong to the underground people. Their animals were considered better than other animals. They were both fat and beautiful. If something made from steel was thrown over the animal, you could get power over it. But this could lead to animosity from the whites, so you better be careful. They often guard the environment they're in. It could be a lake or a forest or another place. Anyone who infringes should show them due respect to not attract the anger of the white. 
to avoid facing the rage of the whites if you did something you thought might not be popular you could put food out on what they called white mounds Vettekast, Vettehög as revenge for disturbances, damage or infringements they can for example give you bad luck with animals make you sick or bring you poverty sometimes they took their revenge out on children by sucking on their fingers and toes until it hurt and the children started crying hysterically. If the house or buildings they lived under were mismanaged, the whites move away. In addition, the whites get cranky and can cause a lot of problems before moving. If you did something even worse, like destroy their home, they could burn up your whole house. Whites sometimes even got the blame for arson fires when their anger took over. Sometimes whites are accused of causing traffic accidents. In Iceland it's even common practice to consult the whites and owls in areas where you plan to build. This applies both to building and road construction. On the E4 north of Gävle in Sweden there have been many accidents over the years, especially at a place called Skarvbarja. When a newspaper investigated these stories more closely, they encountered stories of whites, trolls, gnomes and other creatures. There are some rules of conduct that you should follow in relation to the whites. You know, when walking along a forest road or path, you should be careful not to walk in the middle of it. You know those tractor roads where you have two track, wheel tracks and there's a mound in the middle. Don't walk there. Because that's where the underground people walk. And they are of course invisible when they travel along these roads. Because if you force them off the road, you could fall out of favor with them. The underground people also have their own paths and roads that they travel along and if anyone disturbed the road or built on it, they retaliated by destroying buildings, tools and causing illness for the ones who stayed there. A common action before pouring out hot water outside was to shout something like, watch out down there. The warning was so the little people could get out of the way. If you didn't do that, the whites could punish you with illness or accidents. My mother told me about this tradition of calling out before pouring out hot water when I was around nine. She's not the folklore type otherwise, but this is one thing that stuck with her. According to old tradition, anything that ends up on the floor belongs to the whites. You shouldn't clean up anything until they've taken what they want. If you keep well with them, you're able to get gifts and other benefits of a successful alliance. Anyone who provides help to the underground people or does them a favor could be generously rewarded. Among all the things mentioned, Silver Spoon seems to be a recurring theme. Other things that you might get were gold and precious stones. Although the gift you get initially might not look that good, take good care of it because it might transform overnight. The wash water for young children who hadn't been baptized shouldn't be thrown out without care. It's usually mentioned that you should put hot coals in the water before throwing it out. In addition to this, the children's clothes shouldn't be hung out to dry after the sun had gone down. If these guidelines weren't followed, the whites might come and take the children. If you want contact with the whites or any other power, there are some things to think about. Be polite and respectful. Well, that goes for interaction with regular people as well. Both to the whites and also to the area you're practicing in. 
Be unselfish in your contact with them. Don't sacrifice to get something for yourself. Sacrifice to give a gift or to thank them for something or just to stay in touch. Only when they know that you're unselfish might they decide to help when you ask. They don't have much understanding of your needs and desires and they don't like being treated as servants. Always remember that it should be an equal exchange. They don't like bright sunlight or electrical lighting, so pick a different time than midday on a sunny day. Don't leave any trash behind. There are a lot of stories about the Whites. Uh, Kerstin Karlsten, born 1856 from uh, Kvadelöv in Sweden, spoke of this one mother who had nine children. The youngest got taken by the Whites. It was found underneath the bed all the way up against the wall. The whites had taken it but not harmed it. Adults could also be taken. Sometimes it was a simple explanation as to why someone got lost and didn't come back for quite some time. But sometimes it also happened that the person disappeared forever. Adults being taken is also something we hear about in relation to mountain trolls. The place where the underground people live might be difficult to determine. So it could happen that a barn had to be moved because it was built in a place where they lived. Several stories speak of how far a farmer is sought out by a mysterious creature who takes him under the barn to show how the pea and droppings ran into their bed or on their dining table. In that situation there was nothing else to do but move the animals or in the worst case move the whole barn. The same thing could also apply to house building. This type of story is the most common in relation to the whites. Another common story is how a woman has to step in as midwife for the whites. When a woman was doing some job on the farm, like milking the cows, a stranger comes running with distress in his voice, asking her to help his wife. The man takes the woman to a door she's never seen, and they step into a beautiful house where a woman is in labor. She helps her give birth and wraps the baby up in some piece of her clothing. After she left, the house and the door disappear without a trace. The next morning, the woman sees that there's a pile of silver spoons on her table. It was their thanks for her help the day before. The whites could also come to a cottage and ask for shelter. When they were invited, they held a big party. Hundreds of people came and participated in the festivities. And both food and drink were suddenly plentiful. When they were finished, all the guests disappeared without a trace. Other variations describe how it was rather difficult to get rid of the guests. And that it was only when the Christian God's name was uttered that they actually left. There are stories about how single girls were courted by the underground people. But it was more usual that men said to have different love relationships with the underground people. In some legends, a mysterious girl approaches a stable boy he somehow gets power over her. It could be that she came through a hatch while he was shoveling manure or something and the shovel passed over her head and the steel in the shovel made him get power over her. Then she got stuck until he one day reveals how he first met her and she disappears forever through the same hatch where she came from. In other stories, they mutually decide to marry. Such a marriage was appealing because her family was considered to be wealthy and could pay a 
big dowry. Stories of otherworldly marriages were also told about the Mara and the Huldur. There are, of course, tales of the whites in old Icelandic stories. In Egil, Skallagrimsson's saga, the hard-handed hero Egil is cranky with the Norwegian king eh, Erik Bladax. Because of this, he puts a curse on him where he commands all the land whites to flee the land of the king. Because the whites are associated with the land and its wealth, the result of leaving an area could be that this wealth dies out. In the so-called Poetic Edda, whites are also mentioned. Among other things, they help with a childbirth. In another Icelandic text, Grogos, or Grey Goose, it's warned against making sacrifices to the whites. Similar expressions are also found in medieval legal texts, suggesting that the belief in the whites was pretty widespread, but that it wasn't accepted by the church. The exiled bishop Olaus Magnus wrote a story about the Nordic people in the 16th century and said that the spirit beings that people thought they saw were nothing but the devil's deception. Can't say I agree. Here's a story that was taken down by Edin Brandström in Gällivare in Lapland, Sweden in 1929. There was a man who lived unmarried on his farm, then a young beautiful woman kept coming to him, but he never knew where she came from and she often came during the days, but she disappeared from time to time. He fell in love with her and began to talk to her about marriage. After a while she promised to marry him if he did what she told him to do. She said she was one of the underground people and then she said that there was a hole there low on the wall which is where she came from but he thought the whole thing couldn't possibly be true then she said now that i come to you we will get married but you have to immediately plug the hole when i enter and then she would stay and be his wife she was a great wife to him and had several children but at one point when she was in bed after childbirth, he joked around and said, I'll take that plug out of the wall now. She'd been there for so long, so she was probably staying with him, he thought. But she said, you shouldn't do that because then I will disappear forever. He was joking around and didn't believe it. But when he took the plug out of the hole, she disappeared from the bed with the child and never came back again even though he mourned her. Let's finish off with some random facts. According to Landamabuk, the older Icelandic law prescribed that the dragon in the bow of a longboat must be taken down before you approach land, or the land whites Landvetir, could be startled. They were said to protect Iceland against unwelcome visitors. Four landwights also act as shield holders for Iceland's coat of arms. A bull, an eagle, a dragon and a mountain giant. Fossils of belemnites, an extinct order of half-calved octopi, were called white candles by people in the southernmost parts of Sweden and Denmark. These fossils were believed to be candles left behind by the whites where they had played and danced in a location. The white candles were also believed to be able to protect against such diseases as the whites could cause. Vetteros, or white rose, is a parasitic snapdragon plant that lacks chlorophyll. The botanist Elias Fris gave it the name in the latter part of the 19th century because it spends most of its life underground. Whites also played a pretty big role in the opening of the Olympic Games in Lillehammer in Norway in 1994. 
there's probably a video of it out there somewhere. Thanks for watching, I hope you liked that summary of the whites. Remember to give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends and subscribe if you haven't. I will be back next week. Bye bye.